Hello, K1. God bless you all. Hope everyone is doing well uh, and continue to do well. And you know that if you're not doing well, you certainly can call me, text me, do whatever. Um, let me know what's going on. But God bless you. Uh, it's interesting that I've heard so many great testimonies from, some, from so many of you all. I'm just so blessed when I hear uh, how well you're doing and the things that God's doing in your lives. So that's great. I'm, I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. I don't know if you remember this, but the first message that I, that I shared with you during this virus was how, how we can move forward even in the midst of difficulty. And I shared uh, with you how Isaac in a land of famine, when famine hit, uh, he got more, God blessed him so much that he got more grain and crops and he became very rich in a famine season. Um, so just because everything that's going on is going on, it doesn't mean that God can't move us forward. Which gives me um, uh, some uh, inroad to today's conversation that I want to have with you and um, the title of today's message is the times and seasons of God the times and seasons of God God is not random he's not whimsical he never does anything off the cuff he is a God of times and seasons and unless we understand that God is a God of times and seasons then we'll actually miss him uh, and so we have to rely on Holy Spirit to help us understand God's timing and God's season. And we're actually in one of God's times and seasons. Uh, everybody wants this virus to go away quickly. And everybody's trying to do everything that they can to, to sort of act like we're going to go back to normal. But n nothing has changed. The virus is still out there and things are still going on. Uh, and so the virus will be over when God says the season is over. And I think if we haven't understood anything, we should understand that. That God is a God of times and seasons. Let me give you some, some scriptures that will help you understand this. And I think this is probably the most clear scripture, uh, the most pronounced and uh, scripture regarding time and season. This is Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. Verse 1 it says, For everything there is a season, a time, for every activity under the sun. Let me say that again. For everything there is a season, a time for every activity under the sun, a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to harvest. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to cry and a time to laugh. A time to grieve and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to turn away. A time to search and a time to quit searching. A time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to throw, uh, a time to mend, a time to be quiet and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. I think this scripture really, it really says it all. If, if you take nothing away from this message, this is the scripture to take away from it because it says everything. There's a time for everything, uh, everything in, under the sun um, in a season. And so unless we understand the times and the seasons, we will miss God. There's a scripture, I won't have you turn to it, but there's a scripture that says the sons of Issachar understood the times and they knew what to do when there was a transition between uh, when, when David was becoming king uh, and Saul was, was sort of on his way out. Uh, the scripture says the sons of Issachar, they understood the times and they knew what to do. 
And so for us, I think it's very important that we understand the times and we know what to do. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. It says, so do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. We read it again. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. Here's what we see here. We see that there is a time of persevering and doing the will of God. That's a time and that's a season. Right? It says here, uh, you need to persevere. So there's a time where we need to persevere, a season of persevering. And then it says, um, so that after you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. So there's a season of persevering, and then there's a season of receiving, right? So, so there's, there's the persevering season and the receiving season. And so if there is no persevering season, there is no receiving season. And so we have to do the will of God in our persevering. We have to be able to do the will of God because if that season doesn't happen, there is no receiving season that God wants to give us. These two seasons sort of go together, the persevering season and the receiving season. And I think sometimes we, we always want there to be just the receiving season and no persevering season. Well, that would be good, but we would also be weak Christians because in the persevering season, God is actually building in us. He's building our character. He's building our integrity. He's keeping us humble. He's wanting us to be just like Jesus. And so, so these persevering seasons are very, very, very important. Uh, let's look at Exodus 23. This is verse 27. This is, this is God speaking to uh, the Israelites when they're going into the promised land. And here's what he's saying to them. Uh, he says, I will send my terror ahead of you and throw into confusion every nation you encounter. I will make all your enemies turn their backs and run. I will send the hornet ahead of you to drive out the Havites, the Canaanites, and Hittites out of your way but I will not drive them out in a single year because the land will become too desolate and the wild animals too numerous for you. Little by little, I will drive them out before you until you have increased enough to take possession of the land. Let me read it again. I will send my terror ahead of you and throw into confusion every nation you encounter. I will make all your enemies turn their backs and run. I will send the hornet ahead of you to drive out the Havites, the Canaanites, the Hittites out of your way, but I will not drive them out in a single year because the land will become desolate and the wild animals too numerous for you. Little by little, I will drive them out before you until you have increased enough to take possession of the land. And here, what, what God is saying is, like, I'm going to give you the whole land, but I'm not going to give it all to you at once. Because if I give it to you at once, the land is so big and you're, you're not able to manage it all yet. So I'm going to give it to you little by little so that as you grow, as you mature, as you, as you grow in number, um, all the wild animals and the beasts, they don't overtake you and then you end up with nothing. So he is going to give the land to them little by little by little. This is God's seasons and times. I know we think we can handle it all right now. Yes, God, give me all your promises right now. I can handle it all. And the reality is 
God knows better. We can't handle it all right now. We can only handle what our maturity and our character and our integrity allows us to handle. If God gives us everything right now that doesn't, that doesn't conform with uh, our, our, our maturity and our integrity, then it's going to crush us and we'll end up with nothing. And you, you've heard me say this before. Uh, sort of like somebody who is um, undisciplined financially and they win the lottery, right? Well, what's going to happen? Well, they're going to just fast as they got the money, they're going to lose it all, right? So God, God, God says, no, nope, I'm not going to let them win the lottery in that regard. I'm going to dole it out little by little by little to the point that they can become mature and have a, have a, a degree of integrity and character so that when they get what, they, what I've promised them, they'll know how to manage it, they'll know how to keep it. But this is God's times and seasons. And I know we think, at least I know I have in my life, that I thought, look, God, I can handle it all, I can do it all, don't, don't worry, just, just give it all to me right now. And when I look back over my life, I'm like, whew, I'm so glad God didn't do all of that for me. I'm so glad he didn't give me all of that. Because really and truly, I would not have been able to handle it all. And so he knows better. So we have to be able to use what we have in this season. Uh, I'm going to jump a little ahead. But the season that we're in always prepares us for the next season. So let's take this virus season. What God is doing in us and through us in this season is preparing us for the next season. If we've, if, if, if we've actually done what we're supposed to do in this season, in God, then we're prepared for the next season. Now, if we've, if we've just sort of sloughed off and we just sort of have not paid attention to, to spending time with God and, and getting to know God and, and pausing on all the stuff that's going on and really sought God, and we won't be prepared for the next season. But if we have, then we will be prepared for the next season. Because God wants to make sure that what we're learning, what we're doing in this season, we're prepared for the next one. Um, let's look at Romans. This is Romans 5. It's just one scripture. Romans 5, just to help us understand about times and seasons. Verse 6, it says, When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. This is Paul writing to the Romans. Let me read it again. It says, When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. You know, you just think about this. You have all of the Old Testament, and then you have uh, the New Testament, and God waits 30 years from the time Christ is born before Christ actually starts his ministry. And when did he come into the world? And when did he start his ministry? According to this scripture, at just the right timing. At just the right timing. And here's what I believe. I believe all of us were born for this season at just the right time. We weren't born out of season. Doesn't matter what was going on in your life and life of your mother and your father and all of that, that none of that matters. You're here and you're here for just the right season. For such a time as this. Uh, you were born into the world to help deal with where we are and what's going on in our world today. And so you have to ask yourself, okay, God, if you uh, created me and I'm here for just this season, there has to be something profound that you want to do in me and through me and for me. And these are the questions that we should be asking ourselves. What do you want to do, God? in me? What do you want to do for me? What do you want to do through me if you've got me here for such a time as this? Okay. Uh, here's the next question. 
What happens if we miss God and try to accomplish in our timing and not God's timing and season? I think we've all tried to do that. We've, we've all tried to pull something that was out of God's season into our own. Let me give you an example of what that looks like. This is Exodus 2, verse 11. This is Moses, about talking about Moses um, while he was still in Egypt. It says, many years later, this is Moses after he's grown up, he's about 40 years old. Many years later, when Moses had grown up, he went out to visit his own people, who were the Hebrews. Um, the Hebrews, and he saw how hard they were forced to work. During his visit, he saw an Egyptian beating one of his fellow Hebrews. After looking in all directions to make sure no one was watching, Moses killed the Egyptian and hid the body in the sand. The next day, when Moses went out to visit his people again, he saw two Hebrew men fighting. Why are you beating up your friend, Moses said to to the one who was starting the fight. The man replied, who appointed you to be our prince and judge? Are you going to kill me as you killed that Egyptian yesterday? Then Moses was afraid, thinking everyone knows what I did. And sure enough, Pharaoh heard what had happened and he tried to kill Moses, but Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in the land of Midian. When Moses arrived at Midian, he sat down beside a well. Okay, so here is Moses. There's something in him that feels the need to deliver the Hebrew people from the Egyptians. This is why he kills the Egyptians when the Egyptian is mistreating one of the Hebrews. This is, this is, this is something that he's feeling and he's understanding. Here's the problem. God says to Abraham... If you were to uh, rewind, God says to Abraham, your people will be slaves in a foreign land for 430 years. This is what he says to Abraham. So when Moses, uh, when, yeah, so when Moses sees this happening with the Egyptian and a Hebrew slave, Moses is actually 40 years too early. It's not until Moses goes out into the desert and another 40 years pass by before we get to the 430 years when God says that your people will be enslaved for 430 years, that then he tells Moses, now go and um, you deliver my people out of Israel. So Moses is trying to do something in his own strength when God's timing doesn't allow for it. So what happens, he ends up killing this, this, uh, this Egyptian and he ends up being a fugitive for 40 years because he's doing something that is out of God's season. I'm telling you, when we try to do things outside of our season, even though it may be good, when we try to do something out of, uh, out of God's season, but in our own timing, typically does not work well at all because it's just not in God's season and so if we want the blessing of God on what we're doing then we've got to operate within God's season look and we've all have done that because we've we've determined in our own mind we want something now we want it the way we want it we want it how we want it we want it whatever we want it and by golly we're gonna have it and it doesn't work it doesn't work and so it's not until 40 years later that God then says to Moses, Moses is now 80 years old, he goes and says, okay, go deliver my people. The scripture says that the people were delivered, they left Egypt 430 years to the very day. This is how much God uh, stays aligned with his word and his times and seasons. He didn't say, oh, Moses, okay, just because you want to kill this guy, I'm not delivering the people yet. No, nope. we still got 40 years to go. 
And so we've got to get in line with what God is doing. Okay, let's look at another scripture. Almost always, we have to align ourselves with God's times and seasons. There are some times, few, that we actually can pull something out of season into season. I'm going to give you an example. There are a few examples in scripture I'm going to give you on, but it's an exception, and I'm going to, I'm going to share it with you. Uh, there's, there's several, but I'm going to share this one with you. This is Mark 7, 24. And um, Mark 7, 24 says, Then Jesus left Galilee and went north to the region of Tyre. He didn't want anyone to know which house he was staying in, but he couldn't keep it a secret. Right away, a woman who had heard about him came and fell at his feet. Her little girl was possessed by an evil spirit, and she begged him to cast out the demon, him, Jesus, to cast out the demon from her daughter. Since she was a Gentile, born in Syria and Phoenicia, Jesus told her, first I should feed the children. The children were the Jews, my own family, the Jews. It isn't right to take the food from the children and throw it to the dogs. She replied, that's true, Lord. Even the dogs under the table are allowed to eat the scraps from the children's plates. Good answer, he said. Now go home, for the demon has left your daughter. And when she arrived home, she found her little girl lying quietly in bed, and the demon was gone. So get this. We know that at this time, Jesus was ministering almost primarily to the Jewish people. When Jesus sent out his 12, and then when he sent out the 70, he told them only go to the Jewish people, right? Because this is a season when they're ministering to the Jews. There is a season when Jesus dies, goes to heaven, and they minister to the Gentiles. But in this season, they're ministering to the Jews almost exclusively. But this woman who gets a revelation from heaven and Jesus sees that she has a faith that could have only come from heaven, that he heals the woman's daughter. How does he know this? Well, the Bible says that Jesus only does what he sees the Father doing. So when this woman says what she says, he can see this is okay because the Father is doing this because this woman has a revelation that could have only come from the Father. And so now Jesus says, okay, go home. Your, your daughter is well. She's no longer demon-possessed. This is one of few times, there are a couple of others in Scripture. Uh, this is one of few times, though, where Jesus pulls something that is out of season, ministering to the Gentiles, into an, uh, the current season. Let me tell you, the only way this will work is you have to know for sure that you have heard from God. You have heard from God, you have heard from God, you have heard from God. Because if you haven't heard from God, this won't work. So you've got to make sure that when you pull something out of season, um, that you've actually heard from God. Now, I believe that, right, so there is a planting season, there is a uh, growing season, there is a uh, harvesting season, and then there is a, a, a dormant winter season. I believe that you can receive in every season if you plant in every season in varying degrees. So there is primarily a planting season. But if you, if you are planting every season, you actually can harvest every season. But it won't be your primary season. It will only be your primary season when you're aligned with the things of God. right? So I want you to understand you, you can receive in every season, but it may not be the primary season for receiving. 
there is primarily a, re a planting season and primarily a growing season and primarily a harvest season and a primarily winter dormant season where you where there's a resting but you can receive in every season you should plant in every season right uh, if there is no planting you shouldn't expect a harvest does that make sense? No, no, no planting, no harvest. No planting, no growing, no harvest. So we have to make sure that if there's a season that we want to receive, we need to make sure that we're planting in every season. Um, in most cases, we won't be able to shorten our seasons that we're in. Just like Moses wasn't able to shorten the 430 years. In most cases, we won't be able to shorten the season, but we can extend them. Hence, uh, we know that there was an 11 day journey from when the children of Israel came out of Egypt and worshiped at Mount Sinai to the Promised Land. It took 11 days. That 11 days turned into 40 years because of their disobedience, because of their hard-heartedness, because of their just wanting to do whatever they wanted to do and not by abide and not wanting to abide by what God wanted them to do. So an 11 day journey turned into a 40 year journey. Now they couldn't shorten the, the 11 day journey, couldn't shorten that, right? But boy, did they extend it. And so, and so my, my, my sense is for us is that we can't shorten seasons. God is going to do what God's going to do when he wants to do it. But we can extend it because of our own disobedience, because of our own lack of doing what God wants us to do. Remember I read to you in Hebrews that after, if, if when we persevere, after we've done the will of God, we can receive what he has promised. So there is a time frame where God is saying, okay, when they've done the will of God, they'll get what I've promised them. But what happens if we don't ever do the will of God? Then the thing that God has promised us, whatever it is, um, it, it's out there somewhere in Never Never Land because we've never chosen to do the will of God. So we can extend God's promises and what we want to receive and God's season and what what we he wants to give us but we can't shorten it so I just want you to think about that and whatever it is you're praying for whatever it is you're believing for you have to ask yourself am I in the will of God am I doing what God has called me to do am I in the season am I aligned with the things of God because if I'm not then whatever he's promised not going to happen. Not going to happen. And we've got to be okay with that. Um, you know, one of the things that I want you to think about is, is this. Um, Mo, um, not Moses. David and Saul. Uh, God didn't necessarily want there to be a king in Israel when Israel was asking for a king. He ultimately wanted them to have a king. He told Abraham that kings would come from him. But they were out of season when they asked for a king. And because they were so adamant, we want a king. Every other nation has a king. So we want one. So God says, fine. Right? So God makes um, Saul king. And he makes, uh, when he makes Saul king, what happens is Saul was never groomed to be king. It was a matter of months when God said to Samuel, go anoint Saul to be king. It was a matter of months before he actually got anointed king and became king. And Saul wasn't groomed to be king. Right? Remember that there is a season where God wants to build into us the things that we need so that we can do and receive what he's called us to do 
and we see, well, that season didn't exist for Saul. So Saul ends up floundering. He starts off good, but he ends up floundering. When he really and truly needs to trust God and believe God, he doesn't. And he ends up missing God and floundering and just disobeying God. David, on the other hand, when God anoints David to be king, there's actually a probably somewhere between a 10 to 13 year period before he actually becomes king. And so what's happening? God is actually building in him the intestinal fortitude and the wisdom and the integrity and the character to actually be king. So there's a 13 year period where he's actually grooming David to be king, something Saul didn't get. So there is very, it's very, very important for us to understand that the, the, the waiting period is, is really, really, really important for us. Um, let me read this to you. And I've read it to you before, but this is 1 Samuel 17, verse 34. This is when David is getting ready to go out and fight Goliath, and he's trying to convince uh, Saul, who, who's afraid to go out, right? Here is, here's a good example of Saul, who wasn't groomed, doesn't trust God to, enough to go out and fight the Israelite, I mean, fight the Philistines because of Goliath. He says, but David persisted. He says, I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this with both lions and bears, and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too, for he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. David connects this season, the season that he's in to go and kill Goliath with a previous season where he was killing lions and bear. And so he recognizes, huh, I have history with God. I have history with God and God coming through for me and he came through for me when I was killing the lions and the bears. And that season, he learned to trust God so that this new season, he's prepared to go out and fight Goliath. And so he has a trust in God. He has a sense that God is going to come through for him. Something Saul didn't get, something Saul didn't see, something God, something Saul didn't understand and wasn't sort of embedded in the spirit of Saul, but it was clear for, for David that he has a history with God and that the previous season prepared him for this season. And so I look, I know we all hate persevering. We all hate those, what, what we call the growing season where God is growing something in us. Boy, it seems like it takes forever forever and a day. And we're like, God, when? When are you going to do this? Trust me. He knows what he's doing. And we just got to give way. We've got to concentrate on making sure that we're killing the lion and the bear of this season to prepare us for the Goliath of the next season. As opposed to looking forward of when we're going to be king in the next season, Let's focus on killing the, the lion and the bears of this season. Um, let me give you another example. This is about Joseph. Uh, and this is Psalm 105, starting in verse 16. He, he is God, called for a famine on the land of Canaan, cutting off its food supply. Then he sent someone to Egypt ahead of them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet with fetters, those are like shackles, and placed his neck in an iron collar until the time 
came to fulfill his dreams. The Lord tested Joseph's character. Then Pharaoh sent for him and, sent, and set him free. The ruler of the nation opened this prison door. Joseph was put in charge of all of the king's household. He became ruler over all the king's possessions. He could instruct the king's aides as he pleased and teach the king's advisors. Interesting. Remember, Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers. And then he was bought by Potiphar. And what did he do when he was bought by Potiphar? Potiphar put him in charge of all of his household. So he's learning the customs. He's learning the, the, the culture of Egypt. He's learning how to manage things. And then when he didn't, when he didn't uh, sleep with Potiphar's wife and Potiphar's uh, wife lied on it, uh, Potiphar put him in jail. And then what happens when he goes to jail, the Bible says that, that the jailer put everything in Joseph's charge. So again, he's learning management skills. He's learning how to deal with people. He's learning financial responsibilities. He's learning all of these things. First, he learned it in, in Potiphar's house. Now he learns it in the prison. He meets a person that has connections to the king. So when this, when this famine, when, when, when uh, the king has this, uh, Pharaoh has this dream about this famine, they call on Joseph. Joseph goes and meets with the king. He explains the dream to the king. And now the king, uh, Pharaoh, puts Joseph in charge of a whole nation. Because he was in charge of a household, he was in charge of a prison, now he's in charge of a whole nation. You see how God prepared Joseph with a household? He, he prepared him in the prison, and now he's in charge of a whole nation. Now that entire time was about 10 to 13 years, the same number of years for David, before David became king. I'm telling you this, and I'm showing you this, is because God wants to build something in you. God isn't trying to rain on your, your parade uh, and you feel like it's just taken so long for God to do what he's promised. He's not. He's actually so wanting to do what he's promised that he's preparing you for. We've got to be okay. There is a season of planting, a season for growing, a season for harvesting, reaping, and a season for resting. And so we've got to be okay with where God has us in each season. I believe that this season that we're in with this virus is preparing us for what's coming after. And my hope and my desire is that you are prepared, that God, that you understand that God is preparing us in this season for the next. And you've done your due diligence in, in honoring God and doing the things that God has called you to do in this season so that we can reap and harvest in this next season when this virus is over. This isn't an accident. God has got tremendous things planned for us when this season is over. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank you. I thank you for all that you are and all that you're doing, God. Father, I pray that we've, we've prepared ourselves in this season, that it's just not been um, a season of just watching endless Netflix or endless Amazon or endless DVDs, but Father, we've actually took the time to honor you and spend time with you and worship you and love you and know you in a greater and a deeper way so that you're growing something in us and that you are strengthening us and you're preparing us for this next season. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you're working in this season, that, you're, that, that none of this has taken you by surprise and you're not caught off guard. We know that you're not. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your grace and your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Maybe you're watching this and you're not uh, a member of the body of Christ, uh, a, a member of the kingdom of God. And so if you want to be, 
you got to do three things. And you just pray with me. First, Lord, I repent of all of my sins. Sins that I know, sins that I don't know. Sins that I'm not even, I don't even remember. Uh, that I'm not even conscious of. I repent and I turn away from my sinful nature. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's not only Savior, but He is Lord. And I believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead and He rules and reigns in heaven, sitting at the right hand of the Father. And I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart that you might rule and reign both as Savior and Lord forever in my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. Just thank you. K1, anyone else is watching, have a great, great week. Uh, enjoy the cool weather as it, as it sort of unfolds. God bless you.